Okay, so Assalamualaikum and selamat sejahtera to Dr. Mara and our fellow classmates. So today, my group, Dedan Gary, Kasrina and I, Nur Anis, will be presenting on the topic of integrated reporting. So our discussion will cover on the introduction of integrated reporting, integrated reporting framework, integrated report components, relationship with stakeholders, the capitals and value creation, connectivity of information, differences between sustainability reporting and integrated reporting, and last but not least, the benefits and challenges of adopting integrated reporting. Okay, so firstly, the introduction. So this comprises what is integrated reporting, objectives of integrated reporting, and who are the International Integrated Reporting Council, IIRC. So firstly, what is integrated reporting? So IR is the complete report of components involved in the creation of a company value over the short, medium, and long term. It comprises communication of financial capital and non-financial capital contributing to the creation of organizational value. IR also requires integrated thinking in order to identify interdependency between internal and external factors that contribute to the organization's value. And this report can be included as part of the organization regulatory compliance report or can, be, or can be presented separately as an additional communication. Next. Okay, so next is the objectives of IR. The main objective of integrated reporting is to explain um, to capital providers on how an organization create value over the short, medium and long term. So the focus of integrated reporting is on providers of financial capital because they influence how capital is allocated for the organization. So it improves the quality of information available for the, for the use of financial capital providers to enable more efficient and productive capital allocation. And besides financial capital provider, integrated reporting will also benefit other stakeholders such as the employees, suppliers, customers, policymakers, regulators, business associates, and also the local community. Okay, next. Okay. Um, okay, so who are the International Integrated Reporting Council or IIRC? So the International Integrated Reporting Council is a global organization formed by an alliance of members representing regulators, investors, companies, standard setters, accountants, and also the NGOs. So the IIRC promotes integrated reporting as a method for communicating on how an organization creates value. And as the name suggests, this organization is fundamental for understanding the practice of integrated reporting. All right, so for my part, I'm going to explain about the IR framework. So next page. Okay, the framework for IR is the guiding principle of information that should be included in the integrated report. So the purpose of this framework is to specify the information to be included in an integrated report. Um, the information includes helps the stakeholders access the organization's ability to create value and the framework is not a benchmark for evaluate, evaluating the quality of organization's strategies or performance. Instead, it's actually a guideline for the necessary information. Um, next page. Okay, here are seven principles uh, of integrated framework that we uh, integrated report that we're going to look at. So the first one is a strategic focus and future orientations. So what we're trying to do here is we're trying to provide information about our strategy and how we're going to create value in the short to medium in the long term. And also we need to look at uh, the use and effects on our capitals. So what we need uh, from this uh, first uh, principles is that we want to know uh, what our strategic focus, what are we doing and what are we going in the future. 
For the second one is that we need to have a principles of connectivity of informations. But in all of these informations, we need to know how they are interconnected. The dependence between and among all different factors that go into our ability to create value and how they are connected between each other. And the third one is that we need to have uh, stakeholder relationships. We should provide information about the nature and the quality of our relationships with our key stakeholder. We need to talk about how and to what extent we understand and take into account and respond to them. Number four, um, number four of, uh, for the principle of preparing the IR is that we also have uh, we also need to have the materiality. We're looking at things that are material, so matters that are going to be substantively affect our ability to create value over the short to medium and long term. Um, we need to focus on things that are material that are going to have a substantial substantive effect going forward for us. And then number five, um, the number five is that uh, in this report, they need to be concise. So there is a lot of information that could go into this. So we need to say what we need to say and not go on and on about it. We need to make a sentence that we have the context and enough context so that people can understand our strategy, our governance and our performance without including things that aren't as important that kind of like um, detract, them, de detract them from the main message about what it is and what, uh, what it is that we do. All right. So... Next one is that we need to have a reliability and completeness. Um, so in here, that uh, we should have everything in the IR that needs, uh, and it needs to be both positive and negative. Things need to be in there, must be balanced uh, without any mistakes, um, and it is complete, reliable, and it, it is completed reliable. Uh, so that people can trust what is in uh, our integrated reporting. Okay, and the last one is that we need to have consistency and comparability, which means over time we need to be using the same reporting policy. So it uh, that must be consistent from one period to the next. Uh, we the way we, we measure things, the way we look at things, the way we report in things. Okay, uh, as we can see now, our business has changes. Some of these things may change as a result of the business changings. So there's need to be consistency, and the consistency is also then connected to the comparability. We want to be able to compare even more to the company where those company have a material impact on our ability to create value. Okay, and if even within our company, we we are connected to others. So it's not just one little company out there. Um, we have we need to have the connections uh, between other companies as well, and also other organizations that can impact on us. Okay, all right. So next, uh, I'm gonna pass this slide to Anis. Okay. So next is about the integrated reporting component. Okay, so there are eight key components, uh, which are the first one is the organizational overview and the external environment under which it operates. So this section addresses that the organization structure and the operate condition of the organization. So identify information in this section will include the mission and vision, key quantifiable information such as the number of employees and the external environment that affecting the organization. So the second one is governance structure and how this supports its ability to create value. So this section addresses the organizational structure and how the structure supports the ability of the organization to create value in the short, medium and also long term. So this section links leadership, strategic decision, organization's culture, remuneration and incentives to the creation of organizational value. So the third one is the business model. So this section addresses the organization's business model. So the information reported in this area includes the business activities, 
inputs, outputs, features that can be enhanced and information covered by other sections which are part of the business model. The fourth one is the risk and opportunity and how they are dealing with them and how they affect the company's ability to create value. So this section identifies specific risks and opportunities affecting the organization's ability to create value and highlights the action the action of the organization in taking um, in dealing with them. So reported information in this section includes the internal and external risk, probability of the risk happening and its magnitude, and also the specific steps of the organization is, take, is taking to address the risk. So the fifth one is the strategy and resource allocation. So this section addresses the direction of the organization is taking and the implementation of the plans that help the organization achieve its objective. So the information reported in this section um, includes the short term, medium and long term strategic plans, methods of measuring achievements, uh, competitive advantages such as intellectual capital and innovation, and also the effects of regulators on the performance of the organization. Okay, next is the performance and achievement of strategy objectives for the period and outcomes. So this section addresses the issue whether the organization has achieved its magnitude, I mean has achieved its strategy objectives and how the strategy objectives affects the capital. So the information included entails the qualitative and quantitative information and key performance indicators. Next is the outlook and challenges facing the company and their implications. So this section addresses the challenges and the organization is likely to face when pursuing its strategies and how um, those strategies will affect the organization, business model and future performance. So anticipate, anticipated changes are highlighted and the ability to deliver expected results are in proportion with the reality on the ground. And last but not least, the basis of presentation needs to be determined, including what methods are to be included in the integrated report and how the elements are quantified or evaluated. So this section, um, it identifies the procedure for determining the methods that to be included in the integrated report and how such methods are quantified. So the role of key persons involved in identifying rele re relevant material, prioritization, and a summary of the framework used in evaluating material is reported. Okay, so I'm going to proceed with the fourth part, which is the relationship with stakeholders. So what is actually stakeholders? What are exactly stakeholders? Stakeholders are the people that matter the most to your business. Each geography, sector and organization will have different stakeholder groups. And it is crucial to map who these individuals or groups are. This can be done by evaluating their current or potential impact on your ability to create value. Common stakeholders may include employees, customers, trade unions, regulators, governments, banks, communities, medias, and the last but not the least, civil society. They have to provide insight into the nature and quality of the organization's relationships with its key stakeholders, including how and to what extent the organization understands and takes into account while respond to their needs and interests. So basically, how are we supposed to engage with our stakeholders? An organization needs to determine the level of engagement best suited to them and their stakeholders. Quality over quantity is the general rule. Directing communication at a group of people does not grow a relationship it's only when we listen to truly understand that the concerns and legitimate needs of stakeholders surface. This whereby provides an opportunity to spot important risk ahead of time 
as well as any opportunities and respond timelessly. So, how do we report on our stakeholder relationships actually? Each company does it differently depending on the maturity of the stakeholders engagement programs and systems. Often, the level of details company wants to disclose is through guide reporting and integrated reporting. So next. Okay, next I will be explaining on the capitals and value creation. All right, next slide. Okay, uh, we start by looking at the six types of capital and different organizations, they have a different form of capital that they kind of uh, rely in order for them to do what they need to do. So, and these capitals are the resources that an organization use in producing and providing uh, products and services. Okay, uh, these also are the stocks of value that the company has and the value is going to be increased or decreased and transformed by the different activities that the organization has. So in our framework, we have six different capitals and we'll see this in our model here in just a little bit. Okay, so first one we have. Uh, we have the financial capital. All right, so for the financial cap financial capital, capital is that the fund available to an organization to use for the productions of goods and the provisions of services. These are the funds that are obtained through financial activities, issuing debt, issuing equity, okay? Somehow uh, getting those financial funds to operate the business with uh, something like that. And then, um, Financial capital uh, is increased when a company earns a profit or when they get additional sources of financing. Next, uh, we will move to the second type of capital, which is manufacturer physical capital. So these are the manufacturer physical objects that are available to the organizations to use in the productions of goods and provisions of services. This includes like property, plant and equipment, uh, but it also includes more as well. OK, it includes some things like uh, it includes things like external manufacturer asset or infrastructures that are available to the organization, such as roads, bridge, water treatment plants, uh, so on and so forth. Next, we move to the third point, which is the third types of capital is intellectual capital. So this comes from the employees itself, the employees' efforts, and it generates intangible assets. So we are looking here at our intellectual property, uh, such as uh, other than that is um, patents, copyright, software, licenses, organizational capitals, uh, and also the knowledge that uh, the employees have, that the companies have, um, the system that the company have, and also the procedures that the company have in place. All right. So next we move to the uh, fourth uh, type of capital, which is the human capital. Human capital such as uh, skills, Okay, human capital such as skills and capabilities uh, and also the experience that uh, employees and employer have among the people in the organizations, um, skills and capabilities that the uh, company have. So that are human capital. Uh, next, uh, we have the social and relationship capital. So uh, this social and relationship capital it comes from a relationship between a uh, company and also society from which it secure it licenses to operate it kinds of uh, the fact that we exist within the society our communities our groups our stakeholder all of this is included in what we are talking about in our social and our relationship capital um, it also uh, included uh, our intangible associate with our brand and our reputation as well. Okay, next is the last one, which is uh, we also has a natural capital. This includes 
the renewable and unrenewable natural environment resources such as the air, water, land, forest, min minerals uh, that goes into the goods and also the services. And this is going to support our past, current and future prosperity. Next, we move to the value creations. Next slide. Okay, so for the value creation is actually a process uh, um, that depict in the figure here, the external environments, including economic conditions, technological change, societal issues, and also environmental challenges um, that set the context within which the organizations operates. Okay, so the missions and visions encompasses the whole organizations, identifying the purpose and intentions in clear con and concise terms. So those charged with governance are responsible for creating an appropriate oversight structure to support the ab ability uh, for the organization to create value. And at the core of the organization, uh, it is a business model which draw on various capital as inputs and through its business activities. Uh, and then it will convert them to outputs, which is the products, services, byproducts and waste. Uh, the organization also, uh, the organization activities and inputs will lead to the outcomes in terms of effects on the capitals. The capacity of the business model is to adapt the changes in the availability, quality and affordability of inputs. Uh, which can also affect the organization's longer term viability. And inside the business activities, it includes the planning, design, manufacture of products or deployments of specialized skills and knowledge in the provisions of services. It will encourage a culture of innovation, uh, which is often uh, being as a key business activity in terms of generating new products and services that anticipate customer demand, uh, introducing efficiency and also better use of technology. All right, I think that's all. Okay, so the next one is the connectivity of information. So the connectivity of information is one of integrated reporting guiding principles. It requires a holistic system based approach to thinking and reporting. For instance, a good integrated report would connect information about the organization with information about when the environment operates in terms of economic, political, competition, technology, and etc. This will affect the organization's ability to create values. And organizations themselves are systems that are made up of subsystems, and it is seen as a whole, which is then divided into its component parts. Value is not created by any organization alone. It is co-created and needs different resources and relationships to create value for itself. An organization has to create value for others by showing the relationship between the value of other organization and the value for others is an important part of helping users understand the longer term prospects. So, thanks. so now I'm going to talk about the differences between sustainability reporting and integrated reporting. So for sustainability reporting, sustainability reports are prepared for a wide range of uses, such as customers, general community, business suppliers, employees, investors, and many more. Whereby for integrated reporting, the main target audience for integrated reporting are the shareholders, debt finance, institutions, and stockbrokers. The maturity of sustainability reporting helps decide whether the relevant information is useful and whether it meets the various interests of its intended users. Whereby for integrated reporting, the materiality helps decide whether the information could influence the depth providing institutions to give or to withhold capital to the organization. The focus of sustainability reports is on the past, present, and the upcoming periods, whereby for integrated report, it is just prepared the main focus of the current 
and the future period. The assurance of sustainability reports is not a mandatory requirement for businesses. However, the business must remain fair in all of its communications with the stakeholders. And the last but not the least, for integrated reporting, the data can be assured according to the standards and the framework which is applied towards on the business. All right, so next is benefit and challenges of adopting IR. So the first one is that IR can improve, uh, impose a form of discipline on a company's reporting by ensuring that the company concisely report material information that shows how well it is performing in non-financial areas that affects the company's strategy and their executions. And the second one is that uh, integrated reporting can help managers gain better understanding of the relationship between financial performance and also the non-financial performance. The third one is internal measurements and control system for producing reliable and timely non-financial information are improved. And uh, another benefit of adopting IR is that it, uh, it will give a greater employee engagement. Next slide. Next is that uh, integrated reporting can lower an organizational uh, re reputational risk. Um, and also uh, integrated reporting can make better communications about the organization performance, positions, visions, and the mission in both financial and non-financial terms. And last one is that IR can communicate a company's visions of the future and how it addresses non-financial challenges and opportunities. And also enhancing confidence of long-term investor in the company's leadership and its ability to build sustainable value. Next, we will move to the challenges of adopting IR. So there are some challenges of adopting uh, integrated reporting. The first one is that uh, it requires the support of the board directors and the CEO. So if they don't support it, uh, it's not going to happen. The second one is that we uh, also don't have the same established reporting standard as we have for financial information. So it will be difficult for us to report things and to get information as the information uh, are not quite as clear. And then the third one is that the understanding, uh, the challenges is that to understand uh, what is the material issue that needs to be reported and can that can be very challenging a lot of firms specific there uh, a lot of firms that is specific there might be an issue for the like company a that is quite uh, that is critical but it doesn't matter at all at company b so we must have to understand what material not just financially but also all of this non-financial thing as well and then uh, next is we may need to have an assurance opinions about uh, these information in order to establish that our reporting is reliable and it is comparable. And so we may need to essentially have an audit of this non-financial information as well as the financial information. OK, but a little bit harder to do because we don't have any uh, internal because uh, usually company don't have and internal controls over the non-financial data as much as they have towards the financial, da uh, financial data. So it becomes a little bit harder for a company to do that. And then the last one is that, um, Some company, they got all kind of data that they have to pull together for this. Uh, structured, unstructured data, financial and non-financial data, all kinds of places that it's coming from. So all different forms of data that we that they're going to have to be sorted through that. They also need to identify what's material and what's not material, what significant impact on the business and what that significant impact is going to be as well. So it's kind it's kind of hard for them to uh, identify and, and structure all this data into one data. All right, so that's all for me. So in conclusion, the world is advancing at a fast rate 
So integrated reporting needs to keep up the pace with it. While integrated reporting itself is still at an embryonic stage at certain countries. For example, India, it is a little phase a bit earlier than, I mean, a bit in the beginning stages than usual. So the companies there in India needs to be focusing in publishing integrated reporting. But it requires a lot of effort in terms of money, management, vision, and support. That's all from us today. Thank you.